Emotiva's larger speaker, the T3 Plus. It has what Emotiva calls an air motive fold and ribbon tweeter, two five and a quarter inch mid range drivers, and three eight inch woven fiber woofers. It's a large three way design that is basically grasping at full range. It's just under 50 inches tall and weighs 85 pounds. So these are certainly not a small speaker. I previously reviewed the T2 Plus as well, which is similar and different. It shares many of the same drivers, but it's missing a couple on each speaker. The T2 Plus reviews really well and comes in at a significantly cheaper price than the T3 Plus. So the question today is, which one of these is the right buy? Let's break down the speakers and give a winner in each category. It might surprise you how this one plays out. Is it gonna be another case of maybe save your money? So round one, let's take a look at the exteriors. Breaking down our two contestants today, the biggest differences you'll notice right away are the drivers. They share many of the same, the T2 Plus just lacks a second mid-range and goes from three woofers on the T3 Plus to two on the T2. The frequency response of the T3 is 29 to 28,000 and 35 to 28,000 on the T2 Plus. Both are four ohm, 91 dB speakers. They both have magnetic grills, one versus two portholes and the same vinyl leather imitation finish. Likely recycled from the pants you or your dad wore in the 70s. I hope not. Not much to go off of here. They both look like stealth bombers as far as I'm concerned. Bonus, your wife won't even see these coming. This one goes to the T3 Plus just for sheer impressiveness. They are certainly giant. If your space was small, I could see this argued the other way, but we're simply gonna slap a bigger is better on this mostly meaningless category. Okay, onto two channel listening. This one had me conflicted right off the bat. Let me just start with the T2 Plus would be my first choice for two channel, but the T3 Plus sounds better, maybe. As confusing as that sounds, let me justify myself here. The T3 Plus has a fuller sound that can be noticed almost immediately, but it doesn't feel as soft and balanced as the T2 Plus. The T3 was a little more forward with vocals, more detailed push, Likely because the T3 Plus tweeter coverage within the crossover is larger in comparison to the T2 Plus. Either way, I just preferred the T2 for music. Plus it isn't quite as large. I didn't need something that large for my two channel space. It can look a bit overwhelming with your other furniture. This one goes to the T2 Plus. My preference was here, even though it didn't quite have as full or detail driven sound, but more on the full sound in a bit. Okay, now we move into home theater usage. Now we shift the speakers into a larger space, and in some ways we listen for different things to key in on than we did for two channel listening. Now that I have these over into the home theater side, I appreciate the more direct and forward sound from the T3. The details really accentuate the vocals and surrounding details in movies and shows. The T2 Plus still does a good job here and can easily be recommended for home theater. It's just the characteristics of the T3 do it a little better. The size of these is also less of a concern in a home theater environment. In a two channel space, for whatever reason, I want the speakers to look a particular way in the room. A case of visuals influencing your perceived listening, I guess. It's subjective and definitely just my opinion, but I feel like the T3s fit the home theater space just a little bit better. So the home theater winner is gonna be the T3s for myself. I preferred the sound for home theater, but in some ways the T2 pluses felt as if they covered a little bit more of a broad stroke. Do you need a sub for home theater or two channel listening with either of these? Both of these have a pretty wide frequency range. The T3 does get a little bit lower. For two channel listening, I'm gonna say it's a sub optional type speaker with really either of these, but my preference would still be to include one or two properly integrated subs into the mix. The T3 has a bit of a fuller sound than the T2 with its extended range, but either way, they honestly both benefit sonically when a sub is added to the mix. If we go into the home theater side, I'm gonna recommend a sub 10 out of 10 times. Well, maybe nine times out of 10. Maybe you live in the basement of a library inside of a monastery. Even then, just get the sub. So which speaker do I feel brings more value? This one gets a little bit spicy. We have the T2 Plus currently priced at $699.99 and the T3 Plus at $1699. That's a pretty huge jump. What do we get with the T3 Plus to justify it? Well, there's a couple more drivers in each speaker, a larger cabinet, a revised crossover. The value proposition is that it's more of a full range speaker, but I think the T2 Plus is actually the better buy for the hybrid user, someone who might be split between home theater and music. 
The T2 Plus comes in $1,000 less and potentially opens you up to adding a sub or two. You could get the T2s and add either a single Air Motive XS15 for $899 or a couple of their XS12s for nearly the same price as a pair of T3s alone. In all honesty, if your budget can either get the T2 and a sub or two, or the T3s and no sub, I myself would definitely get the smaller T2 and pair it with the subs of your liking. So this one goes to the T2 Plus. The price is really good here, and the fact that you could potentially add a sub and still be under the T3 price point shows the value you can get on a really neutral sounding, good all around speaker. So which one would I buy? I give the sound quality to the T3 Plus. By a narrow margin. It's just a really full sound with a really good extension. But I would still be the T2 Plus buyer. I'm a hybrid user. My home theater space also gets used for music. I have an integrated amp, either an Audiolab 6000A or 9000A, that both have home theater bypass, allowing me to use them as power amps for TV and home theater, or bypass it completely and stream completely through an integrated amp. A setup like this can really bring out the best of both worlds, and makes it so you don't have to compromise on the music side of things. The T2 Plus sound is a little more what I'm looking for for music. They also don't look like a couple of skyscrapers in my living room. The T3 definitely has its place. It's a lot of speaker, and it does really well with dialogue and soundstage. It'd be a better fit for something like a basement theater. I am gonna be building out my home theater over the winter, so stay tuned for that. I hope to have a build series on that one coming as well. So now let's look at the comparables here. For the T2 Plus, we're gonna be comparing this to something like a Yamo C97 II. It'll come in right around 700. It's a totally different voicing than the T2 Plus. V-shaped EQ and can be a lot of fun, but it's not something that I would ever call neutral. I would lean more to the Polk XT70 as a comparison, but the T2 Plus is honestly gonna shine over it in terms of cabinet durability and general construction. The T2 Plus weighs around double the XT70. The sound signature is similar, but not quite on the same level of performance. My last comparable would be something like a Polk ES50. It has more of a high-end look, but won't compete in the terms of bass or soundstage. The Emotivo would be more capable of delivering a clean output in a bigger space. I just wanted to give another option that has a little more of a look and a design focus. At this price point, it's gonna be difficult to find speakers that deliver great sound and combine it with things like real wood veneers or painted finishes. It's just unlikely to happen. The T2 Plus is gonna be hard to beat at this price. It's not gonna win any home design awards, but it's just flat out more capable than most of the speakers offered at this price. Now to bring in comparisons for the T3 Plus, that brings in a whole new group and it's a lot more competitive. There'd be speakers like the Klipsch, RP8000F, Wharfdale Evo 4.3, JBL 690, and Polk R600, as well as many others. But needless to say, it's, it's a highly competitive price point. The T3 Plus still does something that these others don't, which is reach a little bit deeper in the frequency chart. But a lot of these speakers I named excel at other things as well, so it's not quite as cut and dry compared to the T2 Plus, which I feel like carries a little more value over its comparables. I think the general look of the T3 Plus also comes into play a little bit more here. Speakers at this price point start to have a little bit more finish options. Few have real wood veneers or anything like that, but we start to get into some imitation woods and things like painted finishes. At the end of the day, I think both the T2 Plus and the T3 Plus are interesting speakers that had surprising results really. The T2 Plus really shines at its price point and I consider it a top runner within its range. Its ability to conform to really any requirement, movies or music, is what sold me. And the looks feel a little less in your face on a much smaller T2 Plus in comparison to the Tower of Power T3 Plus. The T3 Plus is my home theater pick if it's a dedicated space for movies and TV. It does that really well. I just didn't feel like I actually needed all the extra it provided on the music side. The T2s plus a sub or two really filled all the requirements for me. Well, that does it for today. Please give me a like and subscribe so we can keep this rolling. More gear, more reviews. I have a good number of products in for review, so stay tuned for what's next to come. Take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.